It's that time of year again. Sunday brings us the 2015 Royal Rumble. And this year, I'm not nearly as excited for the Rumble pay-per-view and the Rumble match itself, especially as I have been in recent years or just in general. Uh, my interest level is very low. And, and that's a shame. Now, one of the fun things, though, to talk about every year when it comes to the Royal Rumble, and in particular that Royal Rumble match, is who should win the Royal Rumble, who will win the Royal Rumble, and then what are they going to do going forward on to WrestleMania and perhaps beyond. Now, I know a lot of people this year, when they look at the 2015 Royal Rumble match, they like what they see. They see one option that they really, really love above everything else, and they think that Star Spangled Awesome, and or... They love the fact that there isn't that one individual that stands out above the rest and is, you know, the clear-cut choice. There's a lot of unpredictability here. There are a lot of options. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility for what the WWE can do. Uh, and I fundamentally disagree with all of that crap, fr frankly. It's, it's not a good thing. The reason it's unpredictable, the reason that they have flexibility and a lot of options is because the WWE has done a terrible job of building up towards this Rumble match. And in particular, they have done a terrible, terrible, booty-ass, bad, horrible job of building up one individual to be a really compelling choice or option to win the Royal Rumble, let alone several. So instead of a bunch of different people really looking hot, like three, four, five, where you say, man, they can win the Royal Rumble, you can do this and this and this and this, you know, you have all these options, all this flexibility, lots of unpredictability, and that being a good thing, this is that nobody's really stood out, everybody's in the pack, and yeah, it's unpredictable who's going to win because there's not really a great option, m more so than everybody else, and yeah, they have options, they have flexibility, but that's maybe in part because they haven't really cared about this match, because I am convinced that they don't care about who wins the 2015 Royal Rumble. And most certainly, based off of what you've seen in the build-up to the Royal Rumble match, would indicate as such. And with that said, it's time to give some predictions. Who will win this thing that the WWE doesn't care about? And who will win this match that, sadly, I really, frankly, don't care about that much? Who's going to win the 2015 Royal Rumble? Well, let's start off with some of the guys that I think you could feel pretty safe aren't going to win the Rumble. Dolph Ziggler. Really? Exactly. That ain't happening. You really think that this company would put this guy in that spot and have him be the one that they build a WrestleMania around? Not buying it. Ryback, kind of the same thing to a different degree. You know, it's just... I think they want to get behind this guy, but they only go to a certain point with him. They don't go all the way with him. I think it's pretty safe to say that they'll come up with something for him come WrestleMania time. Or fuck, who knows? Maybe they won't. But I, I don't think he's going to win the Royal Rumble. And I think, frankly, even though a lot of you might disagree with me, I don't think Dean Ambrose is a viable option to win the Rumble either. I mean, they were doing crap like having him job out to Bray Wyatt multiple times, and he's sitting there doing psychological evaluations, and then... He's going after Rusev one time, and then they have to stop the match, and then he beats Wade Barrett on Raw. whoop de doo I just don't think the WWE is ready to go that far with the lunatic fringe and live on the wild side. I don't think they envision him as that type of guy, and I don't think they believe in him all the way yet. So I don't see him as a really um, viable option for the WWE, and I'm sure they don't see him as a viable option. My opinion, anyways, could be proven wrong. But I, I would anticipate uh, that being the case. Unless they did some type of squirrely double winner finish, then maybe that's where an Ambrose would fit in. But him winning it on his own? Yeah, I don't think so. And then you get Rusev and Bray Wyatt. And frankly, two guys that have momentum, you know, Rusev all throughout the course of the past year and Wyatt recently, these are two guys that you could make some type of argument for winning the 2015 Royal Rumble, especially with Brock Lesnar's babyface turn. That's a game changer, especially if you were going to still maintain um, Brock Lesnar as your champion through WrestleMania 31. Then bringing in a Rusev or a Bray Wyatt to face him could potentially work. Here's a Rusev that's beaten just about everybody that's been thrown at his lap, going up against the Brock Smash guy. You know, it's an option, but they ain't going there. They're serving up Rusev for either Ryback or more likely than not seen at WrestleMania. Good God. And then when it comes to Bray Wyatt, 
They've tried to give them some momentum, and they've tried to correct some of their previous wrongs from earlier in 2014. Thank you, John Cena and the crappy Chris Jericho program. The problem is, though, is that there looks like they're building him up for something else, unfortunately. So I think that would take him out of the mix for the Royal Rumble. And again, I'm not sure at this point in time that they would want to build their WrestleMania event uh, around Bray Wyatt being the featured attraction. Maybe a featured attraction, but not the featured attraction. I don't buy that yet. So I think there are three real options for the WWE at this point in terms of who can win the 2015 Royal Rumble. The first one is Daniel Bryan. I know this is the runaway choice for so many of you, but I'm sorry. I still stand by the fact that Daniel Bryan winning the 2015 Royal Rumble would be stupid. Just because you do it this year, it doesn't make up for the failure of do, not doing it last year. Furthermore, the momentum, the landscape is not nearly the same here. Also, when we talk about Daniel Bryan, you're going to send him at Brock Lesnar. You know, you're going to send him at Seth Rollins. You're going to send him at John Cena. Oh, God, no, please. Furthermore, let's be realistic here. We've seen what the WWE's done with Daniel Bryan since he's come back. Have they really done a lot to instill a lot of confidence in you that even if they did try to build a second straight WrestleMania around him and then give him the title, that they would actually follow through and do a good job with him as the champion? Man, I don't think so. And let's face it, even if he did go on to WrestleMania, I mean, then you've got the issue there because... You know, what happens if a Seth Rollins cashes in? You say, you sit there and say, well, he gets heel heat. You know, I, I just don't see where Daniel Bryan is a good choice. And I don't think it's a wise choice for the WWE. You went down that road last year, and it didn't work for different reasons. Yes, I, I grant you. But it didn't work. Why would you go back down that road again? Doesn't make any sense to me. I don't think it makes sense to WWE to do that. I'd be surprised if they did have him win the Royal Rumble. One other choice would be Randy Orton. And I think this is a little bit more of a viable choice that people are giving credit to the WWE for. And a little more viable of a choice than people realize here. Because you could bring Randy Orton back as a surprise at the Royal Rumble on Sunday and have him win it. Have a surprise entrant win it. Have a guy, a former multiple-time world champion, a former Royal Rumble winner himself, actually sit there and win this year's Royal Rumble and have it work and work very well. You could do Randy Orton versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 31. When we talk about not having that compelling, interesting WrestleMania match, well, here's Brock Lesnar, here's Randy Orton, two names from the past, but two guys that a lot of you, correct me if I'm wrong, just a couple of months ago were itching and dying to see wrestle, or was that just the fact that you just didn't want to see John Cena wrestle Brock Lesnar again? Am I, am I wrong here? But now all of a sudden, because Daniel Ryan's involved and he could possibly win, and all that bullshit goes out the freaky door. Look, when I look at Randy Orton as a Rumble winner here, I think it opens up the potential for a lot more possibilities because you could have him go on to WrestleMania 31 in the main event. He could wrestle a Brock Lesnar. He could wrestle John Cena. <laughs> or he could wrestle a Seth Rollins, who would be the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Or you could have him go in there against Lesnar and have Rollins cash in and you launch some type of really interesting post-WrestleMania storyline still based around Orton and the authority and Rollins and the authority, and it works very well. I think when we're talking about a lack of clear-cut options, we could use this Royal Rumble spot, this Royal Rumble win, to reestablish somebody and, you know, really launch them off in a new direction. In this case, Randy Orton recently turned face. You've got the RKO out of Nowhere Vines, which are still a popular thing um, that would re-engage in popularity if he were to win the Royal Rumble. I think you'd make a very strong argument here that a babyface Randy Orton would be the way to go to win the Royal Rumble. However, at this point in time, I still think the winner of the 2015 Royal Rumble is going to be Roman Reigns. And on the one hand... I would applaud the WWE for sticking to their guns. I would applaud the WWE for having a long-term plan and ultimately following through on it. 
I would applaud the WWE for not sitting there and panicking and totally flipping the script after Reigns got hurt, staying true to themselves, staying consistent to themselves and saying, this is what we wanted, this is the type of planning we've needed in the past, and we're trying to build up that next guy to get that next generation up and going. Yeah, that's not Daniel Bryan. He's not the next generation. He's the current generation. Same thing with Randy Orton. With Roman Reigns, that is a part of the future. That is the next generation of the WWE. And at some point in time, that company has to get that generation ready. Here is an opportunity to do that with Roman Reigns. So I would be very pleased on the one hand if they had Roman Reigns do it. On the other hand, you know, now that you've turned Brock Lesnar babyface, if you have Roman Reigns win the 2015 Royal Rumble, the only way that would really work is he would have to turn heel. And that doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to me at this point in time, even though in theory it could work and it could work really well. The purpose of establishing that next generation in this particular case with the Roman Reigns, and the reason he kept on faces this whole time, was so that he could be the babyface conqueror going into WrestleMania 31 to, in a way, avenge the loss by The Undertaker to Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 30 to stop the unstoppable monster in Brock's match. And now you've basically turned Brock Lesnar complete full-on babyface, even though he had already kind of been turned babyface by the crowd, sending him in against a young guy that a lot of people haven't really gotten by. And frankly, a lot of people would view him as the representation of a lot of the problems still with the WWE, even though in a lot of ways he's very similar to Brock freaking Lesnar and his push back in 2002. And frankly, Roman Reigns was more ready in terms of the push and the build that he got than fucking Lesnar was in 2002. But again, I digress. But you could be walking into a potential tsunami tsunami, excuse me, of a shitstorm if you have Roman Reigns be the Royal Rumble winner heading into WrestleMania 31 to face Brock Lesnar. It could kind of work if you did Roman Reigns versus John Cena. Kind of work is, again, kind of work is kind of the deal here. It would maybe work if you did Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins. Because at least then you're going back to the shield. You've got the authority involved and all of that. But then you still run the risk of the crowd turning on Roman Reigns and getting behind Seth Rollins. And the whole dynamic of everything is all fucked up. I blame the WWE for this crap. The guy that you should have been getting ready for a year to be in this spot, to be in this opportunity, to be in this moment, to be able to seize this opportunity and moment, looks as ill-prepared as anybody else for this opportunity and this moment. What is even more ridiculous about this is the fact that the WWE has completely cast aside this freaking match for the sake of the title match at the Royal Rumble when the pay-per-view is named after the fucking 30-man over-the-top rope battle royal. It's ridiculous. Who do I think will win come Sunday? Roman Reigns. How do I think the crowd will react come Sunday? I can only imagine. And how will it go with Roman Reigns main eventing WrestleMania 31 based off of what the WWE has done with him recently? You can only imagine. Not very well.